disagree. I, I think the ones that can explain the opportunity. We always know how some of you can invest in, sadly. All the, all the great deals on Shark Tank are the ones that get explained in 90 seconds or less. Take Scrub Daddy, for example. Within 90 seconds of the guy bouncing around with that sponge, everybody knows what that thing did. And that's why I got an investment. So I think the formula for success is practice your, you know, your, your skills in communicating it to the investor. Make sure you can do it in two minutes or less and explain why it's a great benefit. People can understand a product or an idea, but you have to differentiate product versus company. Those are two different things. And not everything we see is a company. We see a lot of products. Every once in a while we see a company, and that's a different kettle of fish. You want to know something, Kevin? Every product you ridiculed on the set telling me that it was not a company, you were dead wrong on. My most successful products became companies because they were a great starter product. I don't know why you keep, you keep putting that out there. You're going to make people feel as though they have something not worthy to start off with. You've got to start with one thing. You don't start out with a whole shelf full of stuff. The, ri the risk of having – here's the reason. If you have a single product and it fails, it's not a hero, it is a zero, your investment goes to zero. And I don't like that attribute. I would no, no, prefer to have what, companies. No, 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 because if you have a smart entrepreneur, while you see the thing taking a nosedive, and long before it takes a nosedive, you're inventing something new and reshaping it. Come on, we all have done that with our businesses. That's how we grew our businesses. You don't just come out of the gate with the perfect product and then say, oh, it's not a business because it's only a product and now you might fail on it. Forget it. It's too, I, don't, I don't know why you keep pushing that around. It doesn't make any sense. Now you know why I key your car in the parking lot every time we leave the set. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this brings me to another question that has just come through Twitter, and this is from um, Cragen, at Cragen Design. It says, of course, sharks are all friends, but some snarking happens as, this, as it's happening right now. Um, any situations get really too intense that has kind of like broken the friendship at all? Well, there's that one, that, that one, that, listen, I got to be honest. I had to intervene with the FAA to allow Barbara to fly her broom onto the set of Shark Tank. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh, I think for the most part, my my history is I I've only um, gotten to I've only gotten closer with the sharks, but after three four years of doing deals, you know who you feel either are a waste of time or they're too hard to get a hold of, and you, you have a camaraderie, but kind of a you still have a, ah, I don't want to be bothered with this person in this sense or that sense, but we're very, very competitive on, on, the, on the stage because yeah, you're, think, it's real to, money. To your point, Damon, I think the biggest threat to any of the friendships as the seasons go from one to the next to the next is doing deals together. You know, it, it, it's not easy to get a great working partner in anything. And so when you do deals with different sharks, cut up the deal, you soon learn who you work well with, who you don't learn who you don't work well with and who you can really get a deal done with. And so I think that's the biggest threat to the friendships after a while. But you want to know, we all go in and out, we all have different opinions, and once we have that first drink at the end of the day, or Damon has his nine and Kevin drinks his four bottles of wine and whatever else, we all love each other again right away. No problem. No so problem. Okay. Well, I'm going to be honest. I like yeah. everybody. Okay. That's because you're new. <laughs> Lori, what was Lori, what was that lemonade stand comment you made a couple weeks ago? I thought I was set in love. <laughs> it was a good one. I, you know, Lori, Lori's so literal that she doesn't get some good stabs in and jabs, but she's getting really, really good these days. Yeah, that was a, that was a quick one. That was a quick yeah. jab. I like okay. that one, didn't you, Damon? I, I it's hitting me. I love it. <laughs> you should tell folks what it was. Tell, tell, them, tell them quickly what the we story was. We were about moving more product, and Lori said, I passed the lemonade stand moving more, <laughs> moving more product than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was an eye-opening. That was a good one. Um, okay, next question. This comes in from the website. Um, Yasmin Ephraim it says, other than profits to be gained, what would you say you look for in a startup or an existing business to make an investment? So aside from the money, um, what do you look for when you're partnering up with these entrepreneurs? I look for the money. <laughs> That's, what matters. That's the only reason I'm doing this. I'm trying to get richer. The whole concept is you want to go to bed richer than you woke up. It's that simple. I'm not trying to make friends. I'm trying to make money. I look for, I look for great people and great operators with new insights in, in new industries that no matter what happens, I probably will learn way more than they have and I'll be able to apply it to either the business that we're running 
And if that goes to zero, as Kevin would say, it would be applied to the businesses that I'm either going to acquire and or some of the businesses I currently have. And for me, I have to say, I'm never really shooting for somebody who's inventing something totally new because that's one in 20 new businesses we hear on the set. That's it. One in 20 are brand new businesses. Everybody else is crowding somebody else's space. But for me, you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for a high energy. I don't think any of us here know a single person who succeeded really well in business who didn't have a lot of energy, number one. I'm looking for somebody who I could trust, number two. And I'm looking for somebody that's going to make it through the finish line. Because Barbara, you know you're so full of it that your it's eyes not, are brown because, you know, you know how many times somebody went on set, Barbara, and as soon as they left, you said, ah. Oh. And they, was, they had so much energy, and you said, I would not be able to deal with that person every single time. I didn't say only. No, it's a pain in the ass. I'm not talking about that. Come on. I'm talking wow. about high energy to deliver the goods. You can't get somebody with low energy who becomes a good entrepreneur. I've never seen it, ever. Well, yeah. I was going to say, I, I look for what's great, whether it's a product or a business, if it's innovative, if it's new, if it's clever and unique, that's what attracts me. And I look for broad mass appeal. I look for things that the major uh, people in the marketplace are going to want or need. And then I also look mm -hmm. at who's that partner. Um, do they have drive? Do they have passion? Are they going to really fight to make that mm -hmm. business work and run and help me to do it? So I look for all, all of those things. Mm -hmm. But most of what you say then, is the entrepreneurs themselves. For me, well, I think it's really a 50-50 mix. It has to be something that's a great product or business that, you know, back to the instant hero or zero. But if it's a hero, and it, what makes things a hero for me is things like broad mass appeal. Is it something that people really need and want? But, Lori, sometimes you throw the entrepreneur under the bus. Remember that guy with the magnet that holds glasses? You bought the whole thing out, and then you threw him under the bus. We found tire tracks on his body the next morning. <laughs> that guy has hit four million in sales in less than a year. I'd like to go under that bus too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have next question. Uh, just coming in on Twitter. Um, it's from at Denver Katie. Would you ever invest in a small business that didn't have a written business plan? Good question. No. <laughs> Why would I invest in somebody who can't, who's too lazy to even write a business plan? Yeah, I got to go with Damon on that one. If you don't have time to put four slides together to explain what you're doing, you're basically a blind pool. I can do that on my own. I know how to burn money. I don't need any friends to show me how. Mm -hmm. I think that would be tough. I mean, my opinion, if something's great and they're just at the very beginning, it's a fledgling product, it just tells me that I'm going to have to put in 99.9% .9 of the work. But I agree with them. I mean, they should at least put forth an effort. You know okay. what? I have to say on so many of the businesses I invested in were startups, total startups, some with models, not even a product yet. And I'm not bothered if they don't have a business plan. Very often they don't have the skill set to write one. But what bothers me... Oh, gee, I can't wait to invest in that person. Oh, I've done it again and again. But before That's because you I haven't finished money, my course yet. I haven't finished, Kevin. Pipe down. Before I put the money in... What I'm doing is asking them to write how they're going to make money and how they're going to spend the money, what's it going to cost. So you might not call that a business plan. If they're unable to do that, I would never put my money in. And I have refused to put money in. But most people need a little guidance on how to do it if they don't have a Harvard MBA or have any business experience. And most great entrepreneurs come with no business experience. So I don't put a lot of value on that. But they better be able to put some common sense on paper when I ask them. For well, it. it's still common sense, Barbara. I mean, because no, a business mean, plan can be pretty sophisticated and intimidating for a heck of a lot I'm of people. Not talking, I'm not talking that. I'm, I'm talking about something where it shows a direction, it shows a one-year, three-year, five-year, and ten-year plan. Is there an exit strategy? How are you going to get your goods in? Pretty How are you going to scale it? Pretty you know? sophisticated for a lot of folks out there, I think. Well, I wrote one, and listen, you know, at this stage in my life, I'm dyslexic. I could barely write. So imagine 20 years ago, you had to see the one that I wrote. You know what you had 20 years ago, Damon? I read both of your books. What you had is the gift of bullshit come between those lips. And you could convince anybody to see your way of looking at life. <laughs> no, and let me tell you, your mouth can be the best business plan and far more valuable than anything you put on paper because you're standing on your feet every day and pitching people and getting them to get on your team and believe in your product. And you want to know, that's the business plan that counts. That, you can't live with that. You can't succeed without that talent. You know, that's a lot of kumbaya, if you ask me. No, it's not. That's <laughs> That's why that's why Damon's good 